Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Is my video clear? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Sorry about a minute's delay. Good evening, everyone. This is Arul, and you're here for the national level boot camp. Is that right? Yes. Oh, yes. You started in the inter school level. Now you are in the national level already. Wow. So you have finished inter school, state, and now you are in the national level. Am I correct? Did anybody come straight to the national level? No. No, we don't allow that. Right? So, but you know something? Not everybody who started with the inter school level are here today. Everybody is, uh, um, I think, uh, not like about if 10 of them had joined, about only three of you, three of them would come to the national level and you are like one amongst them, right? And there is also one more level before the year ends. You know what level is that? Anybody knows? You know that? Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know what? During this session, you can uh, type in the chat to interact with me, okay? Open the chat box and you can keep typing. As I keep asking you questions also, you can keep typing here. Yes. The other round, the other level, the one more level that is coming, waiting for you. But I'm not sure if everybody sitting here today will go for that level. Not possible, right? Not natural. How many of you think will go to the international level also? Let's have a quick show of hands. Only if you are very confident, like, of course. I will be going. That is just my logical destination. Of course, I will be going. That's my next level. Really? I can see many raised hands. There is a raised hand option also. You can do that. Only few of you are doing that. Okay. Nice. Okay. But before we go there, there is this bridge that we have to cross, which is called the national level, right? So this boot camp is to prepare you to face this competition because uh, this is going to be very uh, not as uh, difficult as the state level because we have many games to play in this uh, you know that right did you see the book did you get the book some of you have received it not everybody i understand that uh, you must have registered a little uh, late that's okay the books will come to you and in the boot camp what we will do is we will show you the pages from the book Okay, so don't worry, you will not be missing much. And I will be doing two rounds. Kani ma'am will follow me and she will be doing the other two rounds. Okay, so I will uh, stop by 7 o'clock. Okay, and by 6.45, I will give you a break. Okay, this is a very, very important thing because if I forget, you're going to tell me break time ma'am, 6.45. Okay, can you do that? In the chat. Thank you so much because I might uh, lose track of time. So 6 to 6.45, I will do one round because that is a big chunk. You know, which is a very, very big round? Which round? Which round? Tell me which round. You had that for state level also. Yes, the words and meanings round. You had 300 words meanings for the state level, right? Yeah, now you have 300 more. You understand? See how it's going to work? Let's first confirm if this is your uh, book. Is this your book? The national level book? It'll be in purple, okay? So if you're, if you're in some other color code, maybe you are in a different grade. For grade four, we have chosen purple. And I chose to wear a purple shirt. You can see purple. If you're also wearing purple, that's great. Kanimam will also be coming in purple, hopefully. So this is words and meanings. And you can see here, see my house also has purple curtains. A to F has 300 words, right? Approximately. And you finished that in the state level. Now you are in the national level and you're going to do 300 more, which means you have to expect questions even from A, B, C. You understand that? So you're, you're going to do from A to P. In this bootcamp, I will only do from G to P because uh, I think Devkani ma'am did that. You remember that? Were you in the state level bootcamp also? Yes. Did you participate or did you miss it? You participated, some of you did. Good. Many of you did. Very good. So ma'am did that. So now I'm going to do from G to P. Beautiful. If you have a different wrapper, don't worry. The content will be the same. Okay. There can be a change in the wrapper, but the same rounds. Okay. Now let's begin. Words and meanings because it is going to take some time. 
And in some pages, I might ask you to enact. I might ask you to go bring something based on the words that are there in the page. Because this is a boot camp, not a lecture session. Okay. So be alert. Get ready to get up, move and all that. Okay. We don't need to have, uh, don't write anything. You don't have to write anything. Don't have to take down notes. This is a very active boot camp. Yes. Got it. And I will also have, thank you, dears, for the thumbs ups. I will also show you some pictures and you have to guess what is the word for that. If you are used to, to DK Mam session, you will know what to do, right? So some of uh, the pictures would be videos, GIFs and everything, right? So this is uh, your first page. And I'm sure you know that at the bottom, you will have pictures because you can better remember the words with pictures. So gabble, gallery, galler, garments, gasoline. That's why in the US they call it the gas. Though it is not gas, it is liquid, right? Gastric, gateway, gorge, geek. Okay. So this page, the captions are already here. I'm not going to ask you to do anything, but this page. Can you all read this very closely? If you have already read the meanings, that's great. If you have not, look at the words very keenly. Okay. We have gill, gimmick, girth, gladiator, glad, gloss, gradual, gruff, like speaking in a very gruff voice. That is gruff unpleasant horse walls yeah and guilt i am now going to show you a picture and you are going to tell me what is the word are you ready let's see who is the first person answering you're not ready are you ready okay if it is if you're not able to see the meanings can you read words is it very blurred darlings It is blurred, is it? Little okay, blurred. You... Bala, sir? I'm a little blurred, ma'am. It's a little blurred. But you can see the words, right? Yeah, ma'am. Ma uh, okay. You can't see the words also. Then please do something about your internet connection at your end. I'll read the words once again. Gil, gimmick, girth, gladiator, glad, gloss, gradual, gruff, guilt. Okay? Now the picture. What can this be? Very good. Not donuts. So this is a gimmick. This is a marketing gimmick. They are making you to buy their product with all these um, alluring offers. So it says free gift insert. And this is not donuts. This is a cereal box. You know, this fruit loops, right? Yeah. Right. Those of you who said gimmick, good job. So this is the next page. Even if you're not able to read the meanings, you will know the words, the words in caps. Gullible, somebody who will believe anything easily. Gulp, when you eat food very fast. Gush, habitat. Hacksaw, the third picture here. Hell, hair raising. Okay. Now, what you will do for me is, I'm not sure if you all had your snack. So, I want you to take something from your dining table and show me how you actually gulp. Gulp something down. We need the energy. It can be a snack bar, a chiki, whatever. And also have your water bottles with you. You don't have to ask anybody's permission to drink water during the session. Okay? Just... Uh, have you? Are you okay? Who is going to demonstrate gulp? Okay, Samarth is doing it. Who can gulp something? Makira, good job. I saw you doing that. Swara, everybody is drinking water. Gulping, very nice. So, let's see the meaning of gulp. Gulp is when you swallow food or liquid in one mouthful, hurriedly or greedily. Good job. And for this page, I want you to look at the words very carefully and I'm going to show you a picture and you're going to tell me what is that. Ready? Hardly. Heath. Hardly is like almost never. Heath is an open land, usually sandy, with low-growing shrubs, shrubs. Okay? And heather. What is heather? Heather is a low-growing shrub with purplish uh, pink flowers. 
heavy duty we know hectic it is a hectic day we know that busy hemisphere we have two hemispheres for the in the earth northern and southern western and also eastern they are also considered two different hemispheres henceforth herald herald is to announce right and hereditary something that we pass it on to the next generation it can be a hereditary heirloom or it can even be hereditary disease all that okay now are you ready to guess the picture is going to come to you let us see who is going to type okay be alert what is this we just i just spread the meaning out even if you not gathered yes heather very good heather like feather heather right h e a t h e r heather next Island, hooray. Okay, there are two different spellings for this word, right? Both are right. Hulk is not just a superhero. Hulk is icing, ignition, illogical, imbalanced. Okay, imbalance. Right, so this is a very simple page. I'm not going to do anything. So icing is what you have on the cake. So it is not cream, it is icing, right? Now let's see this page. And I have a very interesting video after this. So please look at the words very carefully and tell me what is that video for. Okay. Immature, immense, immune, impartial, impede, implant, import, imposing. Okay. I think all of these words are fairly simple to you. Is there any difficult word for you here? My dears, can I show you the video? Are you ready? Okay. The video comes your way. Tell me what is this? Nobody is giving me the answer. You want to look at the words once again, Dios? I got the answer from one student, but I didn't see the name. Yes, two people have answered. So far, three. Four. Five. Okay. The answer is impede. I M P E D. What's the meaning of impede? To delay or prevent the movement or development of someone. So this is an example of that. So what is it, the meaning of impound when the vehicles are taken into custody? So that is impound. Okay. Or uh, the, the place where they are kept. That is also the same word. Okay. And impression, incidents, individual, infamous, that is being famous for all the wrong reasons. Infer, to decipher, to come to a conclusion, that is infer. And infested, influx. Okay. So influx is, you can see here, the mass entry or arrival of people or things. Or the action of flowing in. Like, see how the water is flowing from the dam. Now, for this, um, we don't have to do anything, don't worry. So for, let's go and see the next one. Here we have inhibit, initiative, inland, insane, insect, insist, inspire. Can you tell me what is this of all the words that you saw? Very good. Inspired. Can you tell me who is this personality? Does anybody know who is this personality? You don't know? Very good. I got the answer. <laughs> Not Hitler. This is Walt Disney. Good job. Not Einstein. Right. Next one. Um, I think I must have a few pages. Give me a second. Yes. Instance, instigate, insulate, intact, intense, intercepts. So the same basketball video can be used for this word also. Intercepts, interior, interjection. Now I want you to type an example of the word interjection. Do you know what is an interjection? Wow. Hooray! Alas! Oh my god! Ouch! You! Yippee! Awesome! Very good. 
So all of these words that carry emotions or even some words like uh, I'm thinking to do uh, that fillers, they're also considered as interjections. You got it? Um, can I go um, to the next slide? Um, that is also interjection. Okay. Good job. Oh, ho, very nice. Next one. International, intimation, introverts, invalid, inverted, irony, irrelevant, irrespective, isolates. Okay. Is there anybody here who is an introvert? What is the meaning of introverts? And what, very good, shy, who will just prefer to be by themselves? They're not very sociable. It's like, I just prefer my own company, people like that. Are there people like that here? Very nice. It's not like that is wrong or this is right. You know what is the opposite of introverts? Extrovert, very good. That's the opposite of introverts. Very outgoing, that is extrovert, very good. And you know, what do we call a, call the person who can be both? Is there anybody like that? Oh, it depends on the situation and my mood. Many of you are like that? Yes. You know, what is the word for that? Very good. I saw the correct answer, ambivert. Four of you so far have typed it. Ambi, very nice. Good job. Now let's go and see the next page. I think it is going to start with J. Yes. Drac Dracot, Drangle, Jazz, Jocular, Jot, Jubilee, Justify. I think all the words are easy here. Okay. Generally, what makes the drangling sound? Do you have anything in your house that makes a drangling sound? Are you typing? Very good. Bells, keys, bangers. Very nice. All of these make metallic sounds. So that is why it's called drangle. Can you drangle anybody? Does anybody have anything to drangle? Make that sound? Mm, no? Um, 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 anybody is having anything? You're running and taking something? Oh, yes. You know, what does Niki, Nikita have? What is that? Oh, that makes sound. Very nice. Super. Anybody has anything else? Oh, you have keys. Very nice. That's the go-to thing. Beautiful. Keys jangle. Very nice. Very nice. Now let's go see the next page. Good job, dears. Moving on. What is uh, here? Oh, we have come to K already. We have keepsake, kettle rum, king size, and kink, kin, kinship, okay? And kitchen garden, life. Does anybody in your house, do you have a kitchen garden? A small garden, maybe even in the balcony? Do you? Wow. If you have, can you show it to us? Can you take your mobile phone or your computer there? If you have, that would be awesome. If it's possible, if it's not possible, it's all right. It's okay. I'm just curious. If you have a kitchen garden, you can make your own. Make your, wow, you have so many plants. Awesome, that is awesome. Grow your own plants. It can even be a very, very small garden like this. Anybody else? Is anybody else showing? Good job, yes. You can, it can even be just two or three plants, just herbs, just something that you have, but you can't grow. That is great. Not a problem. If you have, that is great. That's awesome. Even if you're not able to show, it's okay. So let's see, what is this word? Keepsake is an item or a thing that you keep in the memory of someone or you give that uh, for somebody to remember you by. So that is a keepsake, okay? Uh, can anybody tell me? If anybody has watched this movie, you can tell. Me. Yeah, another word for souvenir. Do you know what is this uh, movie? Rishita, do you know this? Okay, you can unmute. Home Alone. That is correct. This is a very old movie. I'm surprised that you know it. Did your parents uh, ask you to watch it? Okay. Many of you know? Some of you know? 
Okay. So this is from Home Alone and he is getting two turtle doves and he is going to give one to whom? Yeah, it is lost in New York. New York. Very good. If you know the answer, type in the chat. Who is he going to give this to? Very good. A very lonely woman. Yeah, his name is Kevin. That is correct. And he will give it to her. She who has no friends. Very nice. So your friends need not be just your age. Remember that. Okay. That's a keepsake. That turtle dog. Right. Now, lament, landing, laps, lash, lateral, laid. This is not lad or it's uh, lade. It's laid. Okay. Lattice, lawless. Okay. This is how you pronounce. The meanings might not be visible to you. Don't worry. When the books, co books come to you, you can prepare yourself better for the exam. And you might think there are many difficult words, but I'll ask you to first pick those words that you already know. Okay? And then you'll be left with only some words that you do not know. Yes, that is from the second movie, Lost in New York. Very good. That is correct. Now, in this page, we have leech. Again, leech. What do you call these words that have the same sounds? Does anybody know? Anybody know? When words have the same sounds, what are they called? Very good. Homophones. Beautiful. Darlings, I will not be able to allow you, I'll not be able to ask you to speak all the time. So yes, please do type in the chat. So these are homophones. Good job. Now, we also have lifeboat, lighten, likelihood, limited, lining, litter, and this is L-I-T-T-R. L-A-T-E-R and L-A-T-R-E. They are both measurements of liquid and this is not the same. Lobe and lodge. So these are the words and I'm going to show you a video. I don't want you to be disgusted, okay? There are so many, many different creatures in this world. It's very easy to be offended, to get scared, to not like it, but be more curious. That's a better uh, frame of mind, okay? There are many different kinds of creatures in this world and be curious to know more about it. Okay? So don't be repulsed by it. Okay, what is this? Very good. This is, are you typing the correct spelling there? Are you sure? Very good. Majority of you are giving me the correct spelling. So this is leech, L-E-E-C-H. Yes, it is going to suck your blood. Be very careful if you love to go on adventurous treks or hikes. This is not an earthworm. This is a leech. And it will not cause you any pain, but it will be happily sucking your blood. You can remove it. It will still be bleeding because it has a special thing that will make you not clot your blood. Do you know that? Yeah. Initially, the blood will stop flowing because it clots but it has it secretes something like an enzyme that will prevent your blood from clotting so blood keeps flowing but then it's not that scary it should not keep you from going on adventures learn how to deal with it and deal with it okay and this is the other word l-e-a-c-h so this means to remove a solid from a liquid so this is what you also have your experience see to remove a chemical or mineral from a substance such as soil by passing water through it. So that is L-E-A-C-H. L-E-A-C-H is this insect. Right. Not insect, organism. Lonely, lookalike, loot, lottery, lounge, lovable, low tide, lubber, and lubricants. Okay. Now tell me what do you call a person who is a very clumsy, who does not, uh, uh, generally has a very awkward demeanor. Not lazy, not, yes, not lonely, but lubber. Okay, L-U-B-B-E-R, that's the word. The word is here, L-U-B-B-E-R, like rubber, lubber. That might be a new word, but we're all learning every many new things every single day, right? Lug, luggage. Luster, magnitude, mainland, manhole, mantelpiece, manual, marvel, master. I think in this page, Pali, every word is simple. Is there any tough word, darlings, in this page? 
not L U B U R, L U B B E R, just like rubber, but the initial uh, letter is a different letter. Mantelpiece. You want to know what is a mantelpiece? Okay, mantelpiece is right here, and also uh, it can be both M A N T E L or M A N T E uh, L E, right? A shelf that surrounds the fireplace that is usually made of marble, stone, or wood. So there is a shelf above the fireplace that is called the mantelpiece, right? Now I'm going to show you the picture and you can tell me which word is it, okay? Have you seen all the words? One, two, three. What is this? Very good. L U S T R E, luster. But is it L U S T E or also? Both are correct spellings, right? But according to British English, it is L U S T R E. But does anybody know from which story I have taken this uh, particular stone? Does anybody have any idea? Not Manuel. Not Harry Potter, not Doctor Strange. It is not Anya. Okay, I'll tell you. From The Hobbit. Has anybody seen The Hobbit, the movie, or read the book, The Hobbit? Too much for your age? You can read it. It's for your age. My son read it, so I think he's your family's his age. How old are you, darlings? Eight, nine, ten? Nine? Okay. Ten? Nine going on ten, you can start. It's a very small book. But this book was made into three movies, okay? And this is the Arkane Stone. That's the most important jewel in this movie. And here I also have you the different spellings between the British and the American English. So luster, we saw it as T-R-E. So that is British English, like theater, center, meter. That is how we write in the British English. Like how we write color with U, in the American English, they don't write with you. Color, labor, humor, they omit the you, right? And also when we have words like defense, offense, license, ending with C-E, they have with S-E. And all these words, we have double L. And in the US English, they only have single L. Why am I saying we have, we have? Because we follow the British English. Yes, that is uh, for a fact. And if you're going to write L-U-S-T-E-R, I'm not a bad British. Why did you call me that? No? Okay. Right. So this is what we have here. The difference in the British and the American spelling. It's both, both are right, but we follow the British English in the Indian uh, country. In many Commonwealth countries, that's what they do. And in this page, we have masterful, mathits, Maxim, mechanism, mellow, memorial, menace, menial, mentality. So these are the words. When I say menace, what is that comic character that comes to your mind immediately? What? Yes, Dennis. Dennis the menace. Hulk. What do you consider a menace? Or who do you consider a menace in your lives? Rat, your sister, <laughs> rats, trouble, minus, okay, that rhymes, nobody, okay, your dad, <laughs> oh my god, I hope he's not around to read this, okay, your brother, okay, many of you are saying your siblings, when I was your age, I would also might have said my siblings, I can totally understand. But as you age, as you grow up, you will find that they could be the most best friends possible. Right? Right. So this is this page. And for the next page, I'm going to show you a picture. So please do uh, see all of these words. Observe all of these words very carefully. And let me see if you're able to guess it. And after you guess, I will tell you the meaning. Okay? One, two, three. The picture is here. What is this? Road, mile, road. Darlings, what I'll do is I will show you these words once again. Messenger, microwave, midday, mile, minimal, mirage, misery, missile, 
misuse. Now you tell me. I don't remember reading the word value. It can be both mild, but the word that I actually was looking for is mirage. Has anybody seen a mirage here for real? Have you some up? Okay. Anybody else? Pranya also? Prashita? Right. When you're going on a very sunny day, when it's all like very sunny and the road is just too bright, you will feel like you're actually looking at water on the road. But when you go closer, there won't be any water. Right? So that is like an illusion. And that is because when the light is reflected in different densities, that will happen. It is a scientific phenomenon. So that water that you see in this picture is not real water. This is a mirage. Okay? Right. The next picture. Mode, modify, moisture, moments, monotone, mood, moo. It's not mood. Moo. Like ka, pisha. We don't pronounce the R. A, ha. Motel, motivate, motorcycle, moto, mumble. Okay. Uh, hope all of these words are easy. None of them. Okay. More if that's, uh, if you've read uh, many story books, then especially classical books, you will know what's the meaning of more. It's like the uncultivated piece of land where you cannot cultivate anything because it's very infertile and it is covered with rough grass. So that is a more. Okay. Next page. Okay, when somebody you feel like is doing something just because they have to do it. Don't be just a namesake friend. Don't do it just for namesake. Do we say all this? Yes. Yeah, when somebody is uh, pretending when they are not really interested. Just do it for namesake. We say that, no? We assume that that is the meaning of that word. But that is the most craziest assumption because many people do that it's very common but you know what is the meaning of namesake you know it that's awesome if you know you can uh, type in the chat if you know what is the meaning of namesake no uh, it's acting don't do it for namesake if you don't if you're not interested just don't do it we say that no so we don't we should not be using that word like that actually the uh, meaning of namesake is when a person or something is named after another person or another thing, that is a namesake. For example, if you are named after your grandmother, then that's a namesake. You understand? And I, my name is Arul Muri and I am named after a Chora king, Arul Muri Varman. So that makes me a namesake. Get it? So just doing for namesake, that is a wrong uh, understanding of the word. And I also have some uh, interesting namesakes here. Many organisms are named after celebrities. Do you know that? So let's just look at the last one. This beetle is named after Arnold Schwarzenegger because it has its uh, forearms with big biceps. It looks like big biceps. So they named it after him. Agra Schwarzeneggeri. And if you are curious, you can now go and Google many examples like this. Uh, say namesakes after uh, celebrities, you will get a list, a very big uh, list in Wikipedia. It's, it's there. Just check it out. All right, next one. Um, uh, nationwide, nearby, needless, nightingale, normally, notable, noticeable, novelist, nowhere, numerous. Here, at the bottom of the page, you can see uh, an author. Can you tell me who is that author? Anybody knows? Yes, even if you're named after God, that is also an example of namesake. Correct. In India, we have many babies named after gods. Many namesakes. He's not William Shakespeare. Very good. I got the answer. His name is Tolkien. J.R.R. R. Tolkien. And he is the author of the book that we just discussed, The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings. All of this was written by him. He is an excellent, a great author. Please do read. Next one. Nursery, nylon, objection. I think you can hear this word in the courtrooms. Objection, my lord, right? When you oppose something. Oblong, observation, occasion, onlooker, onwards. 
A picture is going to come to you and I want you to tell me what is the word. Are you ready? That is why I read the words for you, dears. I'll repeat once again. Nursery, nylon, objection, oblong, observation, occasion, onlooker, onwards. So what is this? Good. Anurag, you were the first one to type. The answer is occasion. That is the correct answer. Good job. Next one. And can you tell me where is this happening? Any idea? Very good. This is happening in the Great Hall in the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Oh, beautiful. You're saying Harry Potter? That also counts. No problem. Right. Opaque, operate, oratory, ordinary, ornamental, orphanage. Are you ready? Easy words. And you tell me. What is this? He's not begging. Correct. This is an orphanage. And can you tell me which book this is? Please, sir, may I have some more? This is a classic. Anybody knows? Yes, Oliver Twist. Beautiful. Even if you have not read the book, let's know a few things. So this is very oft quoted. Right. Outcry, outgrow, outlying, output, outspoken, or when, overcrowd. So I think when you see out, you can uh, easily understand like overdo, outcry, outgrow, outlaw, something that's in the exteriors, output, outspoke. All are easy, I think. I'm moving on. Overdose, overlaid, overnight, oversight, overturn, paddock. Simple words. Okay. Right, next page. Paul, how? That is the right way to say it. Look at the phonetics. It's A, so pal. Pal is an informal word for friend. Pang, paperwork, parade, paraffin. Paraffin is also a petroleum product, right? And uh, they coat it if you want to waterproof something. So paraffin is used as a coating thing. Parameter, parasitic, partial. And here I am going to give you <laughs> a picture that was also a very uh, important social issue. Okay. In the previous page, the first picture is overdose. I think I answered. Now tell me if you have seen all the words. Tell me what is this picture for? Which word is this? They're not friends. Very good. Very good. Those of you who have not paid it. Partial. So equal pay for equal work is a very, very burning social issue. Generally, women get paid lesser than men for the same kind of same amount of work they do. So that is not fact. So this is for the word partial. See how much money the man makes and how much is given to the woman. So that is a very, very uh, a burning contemporary social problem, right? Now, the next page. Pasty, patchy, patrol, pauper, pavement, pawn. What is the meaning of pasty? Being soft and sticky like a paste. So that's the adjective form of paste. Or the other meaning is looking very uh, pale. That is also pasty. Looking pale, unhealthy, lifeless. Patri, I think we know. Petrol, we know. Oh, there is another meaning for pasty. Like a small pie filled with cheese or vegetables or meats. That is also pasty. Right. Popper, the opposite of prince. We know that. Somebody who's very poor. Now, the next page, peaceful, peel, peculiar, again peel, pellets, penalty, penny. Now, I'm going to show you a picture and you're going to tell me which peel is it. Are you ready? Let's finish this in five minutes. You have four more minutes for the break. 
So which peel is this? P -E -E -L or P -E -A -L? P -E -A -L. Very good. And what is P -E -E -L? It is this. Good job. Next page. Performance, perhaps permanent, persist personality, Peter Out, Phoenix, photogenic. And what is this? Very good. This is the phoenix. So this is the phoenix on its burning day. What happens after it has burned down? The phoenix rises from the ashes. Right. Next picture. Phrasal, picture, piers, pincers, piping, placard. All is simple. You can see pincers here. It can be a tool or it can also be on an animal like the crab. Right? We have plague, plasma, plaza, plead, plenty, plop. The sound the frog makes when it jumps into the water. That's plop. And plumbing, not plumbing. The bee silence. And can you tell me what is the word I want here? This is the fourth state of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, and not plop. This is plasma. Very good. The fourth state of matter is plasma. Also, you will find plasma in your blood. And they are not related. That plasma is different from this plasma. Okay? 55% of your blood is actually plasma. Right? Now we have podium, poetic, poetry, poisonous, pollute, pomp, and pots. Nothing called easy except pomp. What is pomp? A grand glittering display of a spectacular show. So the show was all pomp. When you say that, then you mean that it is so grand. Posh, possess, possibility, potence, pottery, pounds, practice. Now tell me what is this picture for? Have you seen the words? Posh, possess, possibility, potent, pottery, pounds. What is this word for? Possess. Very good. Very nice. Is it a Porsche? No, it's an okay house. A Porsche house would be like a palace. And how many S's does this word have? Possess. Because many of you are giving me, yeah, not three, not two, but four. And I took the help of my son to draw this. So this, you can remember like with mnemonics like this, you can imagine that you have a very uh, precious emerald in a box, in a safe box, in a treasure box. And there are four soldiers, two on either side for the letter S. And they are guarding it and shooting anybody who comes to take it. So possess is to have something very right, like this. So you can also have your own mnemonics like that. Moving on, practice, prank, proceed, predict, prefix, preludes. Okay. Prelude is what you have, like a small, a short speech or something that happens before the main. Even our constitution has a prelude. Precede is something that comes before. Predict is something that you, so pre means before, right? Predict, something that you're going to, that something you're predicting that's going to happen later, right? So pre, before. Next page, premier, premier. These are not homophones. So you can see there is a difference in their sounds. Preside. Pressure, pricey, pride, prime. Quickly, what is this? If you know already, that would be great. Very good. A group of lions is called a pride. Yes, dears, your break is coming right away. Just a second, let's finish. I'm going to almost complete. Primitive, pronounce, pronunciation, proof, property, provoke. And this is your last page. Prowl, prune, publicity. Pulley, pump, puncture, punish, purchase, put out, and pyramid. Can you tell me what is this picture for? And with this, we can go for the break. It's not prune. It's not pump. What is this? Very good. And remember never to ride a punctured cycle or bike or drive a punctured car. It can get crazy like this. Now, please go for a break and come back in two minutes. Bye-bye, everyone. Please stretch yourself. Look at something that's very far. Don't look at the screen. Have some snack. Please go. We'll meet in two minutes. Bye-bye. Don't look at the screen. Close your eyes.
take a break. When you're back, I will start with crossword. If you feel, if you're feeling numb in your feet, just jump, do something active. Stretch your arms. Don't read a book. Do something that you've not been doing. You can even sit in an inverted position. Put your head down, legs up, do whatever. Yeah, play, do whatever. One more minute. Let me unmute myself. I will end by 7 o'clock. Kani ma'am will join by 7. And Kani ma'am will go till 7.45. And we'll conclude before it. Boot camps will go for 2 hours. You know this. Nehar, get up and go. <laughs> this is your break time, Nehar. Start Sarvotam. You don't have to sit here and cry. We are resuming in half a minute. Let's do a countdown from 20 for those who are still not back. Yes. Can I unmute you all? Will you be very loud if I do? You're just going to do a countdown from 20 to 1. Okay. 20. 19 I'm now going to start. Are you all back? Thank you, everybody. Those of you who were back early and doing this countdown with me. That's great. Thank you. Now let's continue and complete this round. This is a very, very simple round. This is on crossword. And you have only six exercises. And every exercise is for like two pages only. Can you believe that? No, every exercise is for like one page. And at the end, you will see all of the solutions in one single page. So you can see that this is a very, very simple and interesting round though, because every exercise is arranged on a theme. So this one is on meanings. You can see that? The smallest unit of money in UK. Who knows what's the answer? What is the smallest unit of money in UK? Are you able to type this? Oh, please type now. Not pound. Okay, let's see. Across four. One, two, three, four, five. So five letters. So not cent. Not euro. Not dollar. Penny is the correct answer. Do you know the proverb? Uh, pound, no. Penny wise and pound foolish. Meaning you focus on the small, simple things and you lose focus on the big things. So penny is small and pound is bigger. That's a huge one. So this is how you do. You will start in the box where the number is there. And if it is across, you will write from left to right. And if it is down from top to bottom, as simple as that. Okay, now let's do another. Very dark brown timber from a tropical tree. This is down five. Down five is uh, here. One, two, three, four, five letter word. Can anybody tell me? Very good. Ebony. Good job. 
And when you fill it up, it's going to look like this. Okay, you saw this. Now let me ask you a question. What can you call a set of moral principles? No, I just showed you the picture. Yes, ethics. Very good. Now let's go see the next exercise. So this is all based on geographical words, right? So all of these are also represented with pictures. So you have picture clues. And can you tell me the easiest one here, the last one? Down number six. Very good. That is the code. The outer layer is the crust. The inner layer is the code. What is there in between? Very good. Mansell, you are very, very smart. And I'll ask you one more. What do you have in number eight? That is a natural disaster. Yes, the core is the most hottest place, correct. Earthquake, very nice. Let's see the fill in. Beautiful. Okay, I'll just ask you one more. What do you call number nine? What is number nine? It's not the beach. It's called an estuary. Very good. That place, that meeting place is an estuary. Now let's do the next one. So this is your exercise number three. You, ha you have all science related words here, right? So you will have simple ones, but then you might also have some instruments like this um, that they will use it in the lab. Um, I'll ask you a very, very simple one. What is number seven? Again, down last, number seven. Is it an atom or molecule? Number seven is the entire thing, the whole of H2O water. So that is a molecule. Can you tell me which number is atom? Atom is also here. Which number is atom? Very good. Four is atom because only that little one, that one H is only circled. So that is an atom. Beautiful. And what do you call these organisms that do not have the vertebrae? That is number eight. No spinal cord. Very good. Invertebrates. Very nice. So those that have the vertebral column, we call them vertebrates. And what do you call number 10? Oh my God, humans are also in that. So you have some animals there, like the bear, the pig, I uh, think uh, the gorilla, um, I think that's an eagle. What do you call all of these animals? Mammals? Very good. They are all mammals. But birds are not mammals. Yes, come on. So they are eating everything. So they are omnivores, right? And number six should be herbivores and number two should be carnivores. Simple. So the two instruments that you have here is scalpel and forceps. Can you tell me which one is uh, scalpel? Is it number three or number nine? Very good. Number three. A scalpel is a very, very sharp cutting instrument. All right, let's go see the next one. So here we have on adjectives. So all of these are adjectives. Um, what is number eight? You have three, very good. Opaque is correct. It's not tall. It's not a window. There is an arrow mark through which you cannot see the giraffe. So that is opaque. And the one that's next to it is translucent. And the one that is clear is... Anybody knows? The one that is clear is the opposite of opaque is transparent. Very good. And let's just do number three, down three. Can you tell me what is that? That wall has a lot of... Uh, 
very nice. Some people also love to do a hairstyle like this, spiky hair, right? So that is spiky. When you look at the answers, you have a card that was flexible. It was not breaking when you flex it. So that is flexible, soluble, sodden, filled with water, like a sponge that is full of water. It's called sodden. When the climb is very, very uh, steep, like almost a straight line, it's like steep. It's not inclined. Upside down, inverted, not uh, filled. When it's empty, it is vacant. That's it. Not so difficult. Spiky. Duplicate. You have one. And when you make many copies of it, that they are all duplicates. Right? Now we are in uh, number five. This is exercise number five. And here we have names for people. Right? What do you call um, a shy person? We just saw this word, right? I hope you remember this. Let me see if you type it. Very good. Introverts. It's not blurry and lagging for everyone. If you feel it is blurry and lagging for you, please fix your connection, dears. And what do you call somebody who is very intelligent but not very fashionable? Very intelligent, but not fashionable. Very good. We call them geek or nerd. Which word is your geek? Okay. Geek or nerd. So somebody who attacks the travelers and loots from them, they are called bandits. Somebody who has extreme beliefs and they believe only what they believe is to be right or true, we call them fanatics. Right? When somebody looks like somebody else, like, they have a, a very uncanny resemblance. We call them lookalikes. Okay, this is your last exercise. And this is on etymology. Etymology is the study of origin of words. And we have chosen one root word from your word analysis. And uh, this root that we have chosen for you is X, also E sometimes in some words. And this means out, okay? All of these hints, you can see they have out in it. So let's just randomly answer three. What do you call uh, to dig out? Number eight. Dig out. It will have E excellence. Very good. Excavates. Digging out is excavate. That is very good. Now, the next one. What do you call number five? To send goods out of one country to another country. Very good. That is export. So when you buy things from another country to your country, that is import. When you send it out, that is export. Just one more, dears. Simple one. What I am going to do right now, and but you are not going to do, is number four. What is that? To go out. I am now going to leave you with Kanima. So what am I going to do? I'm going to exit. So this is how the finished one will look like. So with this, I am going to say bye-bye. And I want to also wish you the very best for your national level exam. It's right around the corner. And once when you finish that, please uh, finish till the international level and emerge as a champion in the level four. That is where we will meet and now Kani ma'am you can take over and continue with uh, the other two rounds. Are you here Kani ma'am? Darlings if you have any questions or doubts at the end of Kani ma'am session Bala sir will be sending you can see spin admin you will be getting many links there is a CQF form that is the content query form in that form you can ask your doubts regarding content if you have any doubts with regards to service you can ask that in SQF. So that way it's more organized and we'll be able to get back to you properly. Clear? So all the best. Bye everyone. Kanima, all yours. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Perfect timing. All right. Um, it's nice to see you all. I see a lot of raised hands. I see a lot of inquisitive faces. I see a lot of eager faces still waiting to learn more. Yes, I'm talking about Hitat, you, and you are the three. Yes, almost all of you. All of your faces are like you know, very fresh. 
wanting to learn more. It's not like it has been one hour since you have been here. Nice. I'm very happy to see this. Faith is, and they're all grade four students, no? So obviously you have more energy. They're all waiting to learn more. Thank you for that. All right. You saw two rounds of Darul Ma'am, crossword and words and meanings. You learned a lot. What we have now was the most easiest round in whole of Pilby International. We have 15 rounds in international level. No? The easiest round is your round 11. That is word weaving. And it's like a game only. You have three kinds of games where uh, you'll be learning a lot of words. So are, we'll be seeing round 11 word weaving and round 12 compound words and kinds of words. But when I say word weaving, what do I mean by that? What is weaving? You know, weavers, weavers are those who make cloth. Weaving is making cloth from different threads. You use a lot of threads and you can make a bed sheet. You can make a blanket. You can make a shirt. You can make a mobile pouch. Weaving is the art of making different things with threads, looms. And just by knowing the art of weaving, you can weave anything. You can't say, I know how to weave only a sari. I don't know how to weave a bed sheet. No. When you know weaving, you can do anything. Likewise, word weaving is where you're going to weave more words. So just with 26 alphabets, you know. Very easy. You have been learning alphabets from your KG kindergarten. Only with those 26 alphabets, you know at least a thousand words now. At least, you can spell it right itself, you have thousand words. So, you must be knowing around 5,000 words minimum. Yes, yeah. the art of learning or weaving more words from other words is word weaving. And that is your uh, round for now. And you have three kinds of exercises in word, in word weaving. One is word wheel, where you'll have jumbled... Uh, once again, I'll just plug in my laptop. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm back. Okay, a word wheel is nothing but jumbled words and uh, forming other words. And then you have word stars, where you'll be finding out words based on clues. And you have word V, no, word combo, where you'll be choosing one alphabet from one set and forming new words. Let's start with the word V. Just like a uh, numeric go round, it is just a wheel full of alphabets. And uh, only if I see your uh, example answer question, you'll be, know how this will come. This is your example picture. You have a clue picture inside the wheel and you have a jumbled letters around the wheel. You'll have to unjumble this and make it into a correct verb. Can you unjumble and give me a correct sentence? You have I C G A R I R E. You have to use all the letters and you, you can't repeat the letters. Very good. I'm getting. No, don't, don't give me rare. Rare is you're not using all the letters. Where they should use all the letters around the picture. Let's go to the clue. What is this? This was you know, used before cars were invented. This is a carriage. You are correct. Just check whether we have used all the alphabets. Yes, we have. The right answer is carriage. Not cart, not track. Because those words are not using all the alphabets. The right word is carriage. But I want you... The next step is you have four blanks on the screen. You will have to form four different words from the given alphabets. Minimum three letters. Rag, car, anything else? Car, very good. Rag, beautiful. Anything else? Age, yes. Ice, very good. Gear, okay, we have car, you already said car. And you already said age. Rage. And then cage. Can you give me only the three letter words that you can form here? Car, ice. Sad. Anything else? Any other three letter? There are at least 10 three lettered words. I got only five from you. Eyes, you already said. Any other three letter word? Era with youth. Good job. Yes. Year. Pragati. Year is also good. Anything else? Car, we already saw. Anything else? Ace. Art. Rig. R, very simple word, R. 
we are going to school r yes and here era r r is a mistake no r i r is a state of being irritated i r okay i want you to give me four letter words now do you do you think you can make any four letter words four lettered words i'm stuck with r area not bad area is correct area can come anything else gear yes anything else area gear cat beautiful prerana prerana anything else who cannot come rare rice there are a lot of four-letter words. Cage, care, rice, acre, race, gear, rage, area, rare and real. Okay. Is there any five-letter word that you can form from carriage? Any five-letter words from carriage? Rent. There is no N in carriage. Yeah. Five-letter word. At least one I able to come up. Arana, good job. Yes. Grace. Racer, Sujai, good job. Grace, racer and crier. Cargo can come because there is no O. Only these three words I could think of. Not bad. You gave me two. All right. Let's try one more question. Yes. There is an image in the center. Yes. And there are only a few letters. Sujai, you are the first one to give me the correct answer. It is a paddock. But what is a paddock? P A D D O K. I mean, I'll show you the image. Yes, not a farm. It's just a small open field where donkeys are kept. No <laughs> horses are kept. That is a paddock. Okay. Now you're gonna give me three letter words from paddock. A small field where horses are kept is paddock. Give me three letter words from paddock. Car. Car. No. Where is R? There is no R in Barak. Give me three letter words from these alphabets. P A D D O C K. Pod, very good. Pod is correct. Dog, okay. Anything else? This is that difficult? No. City, that's not even a word. Pack. Good job. That's a four letter word. Give me three letter words first. Pad, cap. Yes, add that. Okay. That's it. Cap, add, for, dad. That's it. We have cop. Cop is a policeman. No? Cop. And there is a kind of tree called oak. Cap, cop, oak. Cod is a kind of fish. Cod fish. Cod liver oil. Pad, pod, add, dad, and odd. Very good. Do you have any four letter words? Any four letter words? Doc. Yes. Good job. Doc is correct. Anything else? Four letter words, darling. Not cap. Doc and pack. Very simple. With that, we move on to your next kind of game that is word stress. Where you'll be given clues either the first and second letter or the first and last letter. And you have to find out what is the correct word. And this is how it is there in your book. Word stars. Let's try to answer one question. Okay, it starts with BU. All the letters start with BU. The first one is, the first clue it is a conjunction. A conjunction that starts with BU. And yet, for some, that is a conjunction. Okay, maybe I'm getting the chats late. Are you already answering? A conjunction that starts with B-U. You just have to give me one letter. Well, is it? Ah, uh, okay. Vipul, I think you gave me the first answer. The one letter that's missing is T because the answer is but. But is a conjunction, no? All right. I'm going to give you the second answer too. Okay, the second one, the upper part of the human body. The statues of great leaders, they you know, keep it till this. What is that? The upper part of the body. The statue of the dash. No. 
the upper part of the body. One second. Yes, the upper part of, I'm not getting this answer at all. No one is answering correctly. The upper part of the body is called a bust, B-U-S-T. Yes. To break open suddenly, B-U and three letters. The cola bottle dash open. She dash open laughing. No. Burst. To break open suddenly is burst. And uh, a piece of furniture with draws. Any idea what is this? If almost every Indian home has this, a piece of furniture that has dross. Yes. One second. Hi, sir. Is my session going normally? Is it getting stuck? No problem. This piece of furniture you have. You put your clothes inside. It is there in almost all Indian middle class homes. What is that? B U. It's Biru. B U R E A U. And it's also Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. Yes, that Biru. All right. We'll just see one more example. No, two more examples, and then we we'll go for word uh, combo. All right. Okay, um, you have like first and last letters here. So C and U you have, C and E. So a first clue is a signal or a hint. My sister didn't understand all the dash I gave her. All the signals I gave her, all the hints I gave her. Why is that a signal? C. Blank E, a clue that is a Q. Okay, the right answer is Q. And then the second question the central part of something. This, what do you call the central part of the earth? It has a lot, mat, it has mantle. The central part of the earth, what is that? The core of the earth, no? The core of the earth is very hot, they would say. The central part is cool. All right. The th second, third question is to come to an end. Anush, got your point. Uh, things have been remedied. Don't worry. To come to an end. The war has finally come to a dash point. Please stop. Please dash fighting. Could be stop fighting. But then... Another word that starts with C and ends with, ends with E. Very good. It is cease. Yes, the war has finally ceased. Cease. Okay. A drink made from the roasted and ground seeds of a tropical plant. Starts with C, ends with E. The drink that's very famous is adults. Made from seeds. Very good. Yes, it is a, It is nothing but coffee. C O double F W. Very good. With that, we we'll move on to the third kind of exercise, that is word combo. Here, there is no need for any meaning at all. You will just use one word from your left side, that is column A, F, G, W, and the compulsory middle part, that is I, N, and one word from D, E, X. Can you try forming words with me? Let's try. F, I, N, D. Oh, it's a word. Find. Find is correct. F. I N E. That's also correct. Fine. F I N X. Sphinx. There is no word called Sphinx. So that can't come. G G I N I N D. Gind. That's not a word. G I N E. Jain. No, that's not a word either. 
G I N X Jinx. No, that's Jane. That's not a word either. Then let's try with W. W I N D Wind. That's correct. W N I E I N E Wine. So find, find, wind, wine. We have four words that can be formed here. But for you, no, you can form only two words from any uh, question. It's impossible to find the third word. And this is how it will be there in your book. Let's try the example question first. Let's try um, one from column A, compulsory column B, and one from column C. Let's see. So T R I M C trick. No, that's not a word. T R I L T trilled. No, that's not a word either. T R I B tribe. Yes, tribe is a group of people. No, so tribe is correct. Tribe is one word. We have tribe. Let's see. G U I M C guilt. No. G U I L T guilt. Yes, guilt is a word that can be correct. And G U I B E guide. That's not a word. So you have tribe and guilt. No. Anything else? K V I M C quimic. No. K V I quilt. No. Quibi. No. So only two words you're getting. That is guilt and tribe. No other words. We'll just try. Thank you. Uh, next question. Let's see who's giving me the correct answer first. C N U L E. Knule? No. C N U B D. No. Knubdu is not a word. Knuf is not a word. So C N is. Index is not a word. And Kurkumar, you can't say index. All right. Maybe G R U L E. Gruli is not a word. Grubbed is not a word. Gruff. Gruff is a word. No G R U F. Gruff voice. Not polite. Very rough. Gruff is rough. So G R U F F is one correct word, not bad. And J O U, very good, Uncle. Yes, Joule, Joule is a unit of energy, no? Unit of energy is two. Only these two words you can, you know, come up with. Nothing else. We'll just find one more one before we go to group round twelve. Uh, F R N I A L, no, Frenial, Freni, Frenish, no, F R you cannot use. B A N I, yes, B A N I S H, banish is correct. When you, you know banish someone from the kingdom for you not know, doing bad things, that is banish. Anything else? M E N I, yes, menial. What do you mean by menial? A menial job was where you don't need any skill. You, you know, you're not paid very much for the job. A menial job is a job that's considered uh, unskilled. Like uh, sweeping work, mopping work, all these are called menial work, which doesn't require much skill, mental skill or physical skill. With that, you're done with your round loan, your easiest long round till date, and then you're going to group. Go, you're going to go to round twelve, compound words and the kinds and types of words. What do you mean by compound word? Words that are written on a compound, very profound thoughts. Good advice is, is that a compound word? No, no. You're all fourth graders. You know what is a compound word? When you join two small words together and create a new word which has a completely different meaning. For example, you know what is butter? It is a, con it is a condiment. You know what is a fly? You see flies. But when you join them together, it becomes... Butterfly, a completely different organism. Likewise, wheel and chair becomes wheelchair. Sun and flower becomes sun and flower becomes sunflower. Foot and ball becomes football. Rain and bow becomes rain. This exercise is like this. You have only two exercises on compound words. Let's try answering a few questions. And yes, your first question. Selling. No, let's first question. Let's do the example question. A vessel used in rescue service. Small. Yes. Life cycle of a plant, different meaning. My lifestyle is different. That's also different. Life boat is a small boat. That's, that's that is used when uh, the main boat is submerged. So lifeboat is correct. Your next question is here. Selling of goods in large quantities at low prices. Wholesome or wholesale? 
wholesale, you know, this is, they say this is wholesale price, that is, it is very lesser price when compared to retail price. Okay. That is wholesale. But what is wholesome? What is wholehearted? Okay, you have two options, okay? Wholesale, wholesome and wholehearted. Give me the answer for here. The food that my mother made, the food was dash and tasty. Wholehearted or wholesome? The food was wholehearted or wholesome? Wholesome meaning it has all the nutri nutrients. It's complete. That's wholesome. My mother made this food wholeheartedly. That's different. But when you're talking about food, it's only wholesome. The food was wholesome and tasty is correct. So you have my dash support. Wholesome support or wholehearted support? Wholehearted. You support with your whole heart. My Indian cricket team has my wholehearted support. No doubts. So that would be wholehearted. With all your heart. Wholehearted is correct. Your next question. Material that emits radiation energy that can damage living tissue. Radio jockey, radiotherapy or radioactive. You cannot be around radioactive materials. You know, that, that, uh, once a nuclear plant goes bust, the whole place will be radioactive. Nobody can be there. They have to evacuate. So that is the radioactive. Radioactive materials emit radiation and that affects living tissue. That is radioactive. But you have two more words, radio jockey and radiotherapy. I'll give you example questions. You tell me which one should come. A person who hosts a radio show is called a radio jockey. Yes. And radio dash is an effective way to treat cancer. Radiotherapy or radiation. They use radiation or radiotherapy to treat cancer. So, you know, three compound words in one single question. A careless error or omission. Please forgive me for this over dash. What do you call a mistake? Oversight, overturn or overnight? A, a careless mistake is called an oversight. This is just a, my, an oversight. Please forgive me. Oversight is the correct answer. But you still have two more words. Overturn and overnight. What do you mean by overturn? The Supreme Court dash, over dash the decision of the lower court. Overturn is completely turning it out. The ship has overturned, meaning it has, you know, become upside down. Overturn is nullifying it. So the high court overturned the decision of the high court or the lower court. Overturn is correct. No the answer for this. This electric bike needs to be charged Charged overturn or overnight. Overnight is whole night. So this electric bike needs to charge needs to charge overnight. Is correct. Okay. The next question. A small item kept in memory of a person. I have this watch in memory of my father. What is that? Namesake or keepsake? I'm getting both answers. A keepsake is something. You have in memory of some. What do you mean by namesake? Namesake? In India, we use don't do something for namesake. Do it properly. That's wrong usage. That's not the correct meaning. What do you mean by namesake? I, when I say I am my grandfather's dash sake, is it namesake or God's sake? That's namesake. But what do you mean by namesake? Nothing. It just means you're named after someone. You have, I mean, your mother and father has given you the same name your grandfather had. That is your namesake. Um, I, my friend Aishwarya is a namesake of Miss World Aishwarya Rai. Having someone else's name for someone else is namesake. As simple as that. And would you let me finish my story for dash sake? Very good. Forgot. Will you let me finish my story for God's sake? Some people consider this very rude. You should not say. So, uh, maybe don't say this in a formal setting. Okay. Your next question is this. What do you mean by, I mean, what word would you use to say to start a journey? We are putting out right now. You're starting right now. 
Will you say you are putting out right now? No. We are singling out right now? No. We are setting out right now. We are just starting. We are, this business is just setting out. To starting something is set out. But what can we also see put out and single out? What is this to extinguish a candle? What out is this? Put out or single out? To extinguish a candle is very good. It's put out to put out a candle. Put out anything that's, you know, burning. Put out a fire. That is put out. To choose one person or thing from a group for special attention. Could be for, you know, praising or criticizing. Just picking out someone and giving them special attention is singling out someone. Single out. That's correct. My teacher always singles me, singles me out and gives me extra work. Because she likes me. That's singling out. With that, we are done with compound words. We have come to kinds and all types of words. But we already know this. We did this in level 2. If you were in boot camp with us, with me, for level 2, we saw this in uh, round 7. I told you there are different parts of speech. How many parts of speech are there? Let me see if you can remember. How many parts of speech are there? Eight. Eight. Yes, everyone remembers. And uh, can you name a few? Can you? Bala sir, is my audio and video okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. There are eight parts of speech. You're correct. Not conjunction. Not. You have nouns, pronouns, verb, verbs, adjectives, prepositions, conjunction, and interjection. These are the essential eight parts of speech. Okay. And you have not simile, metaphor, hyperbole. No. All those are literary devices. Okay. Now we have modified versions of exercises based on this. Let's see. You'll be given normal verbs. You have to give me the continuous form of that word. For example, run becomes running, write becomes writing, sing becomes singing. Like that, you have to give me uh, plus ing for the verbs that you see on the screen. There are a list of there is a list of verbs on your left and options on your right. For example, the first word is rejoice. Just tell me your B, that should be enough. Rejoicing and rejoicing. Should there be an E or not is the question. Right? Uh, Bala sir, I would be happy if you could remove Ankur Kumar. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma Thank you, sir. The first question, rejoice. A or B? A. Rejoicing A is correct. There is no E. Ankur Kumar. Sorry. Question, question number two. Jot. Jot is note. Jot down the note. Jot down what I'm saying. Jotting down is noting down. So, jot should be double T. B is correct. Jotting Ananya. Ananya Anand. Good job. Option three, insist. Insisting or insisting. A or B? B is correct. Insisting. Option, question number four, saddened. The ending of the movie really saddened me. It was a saddening ending. Saddening spelling. B is correct. Only uh, single N. Option five, skim. Skimming. Single M or double N? Option A, option A, single M is correct. And what? Question number six. Blossom, that is flowering. Blossoming. Option A. Option A or B? No, I'm confused. With that being blossom is flower. We see a lot of flowers blossoming in spring. A blossom, it can also be a noun, it can also be a verb. A blossom as such is a noun. Blossom is a flower. Blossoming is the act of flowering. That is blossoming. Single M, option B is correct, not option A. Option B, blossoming, option B is correct. Thank you. With that, we'll move to the next type of question. No. Oh, okay. We didn't see this. Rejoice is rejoicing. Jot is jotting. Insist is insisting. Saddening. Skimming and blossoming. I hope all of you got the right answers. Your next exercise 
Yes. You have to tell me whether a particular word is an adjective or an adverb. You must be knowing what is an adjective or an adverb. Or maybe we should brush it out. Adjectives are something that describe a noun, that add some description about a noun. For example, the nouns are girl, lemon, fox, army man, all these are nouns. And the words that are describing them, there is a beautiful girl, there's a sour lemon, that's a clever fox, he's a brave army man. Beautiful, sour, clever, brave, all these are adjectives. And we know. Ananya Raj, why are you sharing my home same screen? Okay, and what is an adverb? These are some examples of adverbs clearly, nicely, softly. Also, never, too, very, always, well, even these are adverbs because adverbs do the following functions. They answer the following questions. When, when did it happen? Now, today, yesterday, always, all these are adverbs. To what extent? Very much, not so much. Very is an adverb. Where? Where did he go? Here, there, somewhere, nowhere. All these are also adverbs. In what manner? How did she sing? Beautifully, elegantly. All these are also adverbs. Okay. Let's go to the exercise. This is the list of words. Now you have to tell me whether it's an adjective or an adverb. Maybe put it in a sentence, see which word it modifies. A verb, a, a noun or a verb and then you can tell me. Normally. I talk normally even after a fight. So, how do you talk? It modifies the word talk. No? Talk is a verb. So, normally is an adverb. Yes, good job. Adverb. Forthcoming. I am very excited about the forthcoming examination. Forthcoming is coming very soon. Like coming soon picture is there. I am very excited about the forthcoming examination. What What is it uh, modifying? Examination. No? So examination is a noun or a verb. That is a noun. So it is an adjective. Forthcoming is an adjective. Pricey. Again, put it in a sentence. This is a very pricey cell phone. It costs almost a lakh. It is a very pricey handbag. Cell phone, handbag, both are nouns. So pricey should be an adjective. Yes. Henceforth, I just told you, no, anything that answers the question, when, when will this happen? Here afterwards, henceforth. So since it answers the question, when, it is an adverb. Yes. Lonely. This is a very lonely place. He is a very lonely person. Place, person, both are nouns. Even if it ends with an L-Y, it is an adjective. Very good. Especially. I'll especially not write in this book. Especially is an adverb. Very good. You are done with this exercise. With that, we are moving on to the next exercise. We already know what are nouns. We know what are adjectives. And you have adjectives, a list of adjectives here. This is a difficult question. This is a very potent portion. This is an inverted house. This is an opaque. All these are adjectives. I want you to convert these adjectives into nouns. Mm -hmm. Okay. So difficult is an adjective. What does it become when it becomes a noun? Difficultly or difficulty? Option A is difficultly. I completed this problem very difficultly. Difficulty is option B. Difficultly, option A is an adverb, so not a correct answer. Option B is difficulty, no. Right answer is option B. And the second question, potent. Potent, what do you mean by potent? Very strong. No? This is a very potent medicine. If you take it, you will get cured instantly. It is potent. Adjective. So, our noun should be potency or potential. It has a lot of potential, you can say. But potent. 
in the chat is lagging? The right answer is potency option A. Potency is the correct now, not potential. Potential is completely something completely different. And option question number three, inverted. Inverted house. Very good. Almost all correct answers except one or two. The right answer is B, inversion. And opaque. Opaque is not transparent. You're not able to see through. It is opaque. And the noun form of opaque would be opaquely is an adverb. Opacity is the correct noun. The right option is option A. Repetitive. You know, something that keeps repeat, repeating itself is repetitive. Repeat is a verb. That's not a noun. Repetition is the correct noun. Repetition is correct. Your last question is this. Refreshing. This is a very refreshing drink. But when it becomes a noun, what does it become? Refreshing becomes not refreshed. Refreshed is also an adjective or also a verb. But what is a noun? Check out option A. Refreshment is correct. If you have given all six correct answers, good job. With that, we are going to see a very interesting exercise. And that is this. Maybe you will not be able to see this. Homonyms. You know what are homophones? That is uh, two words, same pronunciation. But what do I mean by homonym? A homonym is a word which has same spelling, same pronunciation, but different meaning. For example, when I say bat, the cricket bat or baseball bat is also bat, and this uh, mammal that flies at night, the nocturnal animal, that's also a bat. Same spelling, same, even the pronunciation is not different. That is a homonym. Nim, homo is same, nim is writing, so same... Uh, Spelling and same pronunciation is a homonym. For example, park, you park a car, you park your car, and you also go out to play in a park. Bank. River bank is also a bank. The bank in which you put money is also a bank. Saw. Past tense of C is also saw. The weapon that's used to, you know, not weapon, the tool that is used to cut wood is also saw. Elephant's trunk and tree's trunk. Same word, same spelling, same pronunciation. Bark, tree, I mean tree bark and the dog's bark and a rocking band, rock band and a rock that you find on the road. These are homonyms. Let's see the questions in your book. The first one is yard. You have to tell me which, which are the correct meanings of these. this word. Can be A and B or B and C or A and C. What is an yard? The play yard, an area for a particular purpose, and the US measurement three feet is a yard. A small minority group is a yard. So A and B or A and C or A and B. Very good. C cannot come. C is the wrong meaning. The right answer is A and B. Yard is the area for a particular purpose or a measurement of three feet. Okay, that's yard. Your next question is here. Tank. A large container or a reservoir. Uh, the water tank, we'll say, no? That is a tank. And then a special tax, an armored vehicle. This thing that you see on screen is a tank, no? So the one answer we know. So A and B or A and C or B and C. Which one is actually wrong? There is no special tax called tank. So B cannot come. The right answer is A and C. A large container or and an armored vehicle. A and C is correct. The third question is this. So to give food or drink at a restaurant, our server served us. That is served. Anything else? The act of hitting the ball, shuttlecock, tennis, it is his serve now. 
he served the ball. To make correction in a text. Editing a text. Is it also called a serve? No, no. C can't come. C is not the meaning for serve. The right answer is only A and B. To give to serve food in a restaurant, serving the ball. So right answer is A and B. Your fourth one is hail. Hail is to write a rough outline of a book. Or uh, they say hail rain, no? Small pellets of I mean, ice will you know, rain from the sky. If you actually die, you get hurt or not. It, it can even break the mirror, glasses of windshields of cars. That is the hail rain, the small ice pellets of frozen rain. And to praise publicly, hail season. My uh, teacher hailed all of us before the whole uh, assembly to praise someone publicly. So it looks like only B and C, you know, hail rain and hail season. So right answer is B and C. A is wrong. So yeah, the fifth one, row, a noisy quarrel or small, pretty and delicate or to propel or to move a boat with oars. You know the song, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. So you know C is correct. Rowing is to propel a boat with oars. A or B. There was a very noisy row in the veranda. There was a noisy fight. So A and C is correct. B is not correct. So A and C should be the answer. The next one, remote. This is remote food. That is not processed food. That's, is that correct? Um, remote location. My father's office is uh, situated in a remote location. A controlling device of a TV, radio, etc. That we know is a remote. So C, we know. C is correct. So A or B. Not processed is not correct. Remote Raw is not processed. Not remote. So for remote, it is B and C. With that, we are done with heteronyms. What we have next is, I mean homonyms. What we have next is heteronyms. That is, I'll show an example. Same spelling, but different pronunciation and different meaning. The same spelling, T E A R T E A R, the same for that, both. But when you tear a paper, it's tear, T E A R. But when a tear is coming from your right, it's tear. Tear, not tear. Tear and tear, same spelling, different pronunciations, different meanings. And you have this in your book. Six questions. You'll see the second question. Invalid, that is the word. And we have given simple pronunciations. The phonetic transcription also we have given and the simple pronunciation also we have given. The first one, invalid. Invalid is officially not accepted. This passport is invalid in our country. That is invalid. Option B, invalid. Without planning. The third one, invalid. This is an ill person. He is an invalid. The right answer is A and C. All right. With this, we have we have like five more questions here, which you can read it in your book. With this, we have come to the end of the session. We have come to the end of your national level boot camp. Yes. And we have some important information to be given at the end of the program. Bala said, are we ready with the links? Yeah, ma'am. Yes, very good. Okay. As Arul ma'am was saying, if you have any questions regarding to our service, that is, you didn't get your book, you don't know when your exam is, you don't know when will you get your certificates, and you want to know when is the international level exam, all these kind of service queries, uh, you can see a link in your chat box right now. Do us a favor, open a Word document, just copy all these links there and use it whenever you need it. Copy and paste it because once we end the session, this won't be available for you. Uh, this is the link for your service query form. Any question regarding the service, Go to the link, go to this link, fill it out. We will take it out and uh, give it to a concern coordinator and your issue will be resolved in 48 hours. That is, hours will be promised. So if you have any service queries, fill this out and wait for the resolution. The next link is your content query form, where if you have any doubts regarding the content, why is this the correct answer? Why can't this be the correct answer? Why are you calling this an adverb? This sounds like an adjective to me. Can you explain this concept some more? Any doubts regarding to the content, you can fill it here in content query form and we'll forward it to our content panel 
and they will you know, mail you or call you to solve your query. The next uh, link is the most important link. If we, you know, if we decide to conduct conduct any competition or quiz, if you want to uh, tell to you directly, there will be one stop communication solution is this. This is our official WhatsApp channel. Copy this link and join this channel. And whenever we are, we have a new video coming out, new quiz, new competition, new assignment, or if you, if you are a first 10 rank holders in any level, we're posting your photos now. We hope you're following us on Facebook. We do that extensively. So uh, to check out the photos of the award winners, you need to be a part of this channel. Join this WhatsApp, official WhatsApp channel. But before that, uh, there's an important thing I need to share with you. You'll be having fluency assignments with us this year. We have joined hands with an uh, international organization called World, World Academy of Arts and Science, which is carrying forward a campaign called uh, HS4A, Human Security for All. This campaign is funded by United Nations Fund Organization and you, the students of Spelby International this year, have an opportunity to participate in this campaign. Like, um, you know, what is human security? Basic economic security for every citizen of the world, basic political security, basic food security. We have like eight pillars of about this human security. We'll be having a session separately for this. But we'll also have essays, story writing competition, artwork, debate, and uh, you can even send us a one minute video pledge on what human security means to you. There are a lot of activities coming up. If you think you're, I mean, and the best works, your best artwork, your best videos, it will be showcased in the international websites like the World Academy of Arts and Science in Spurby International website. And you'll also be getting a certificate of participation. A certificate of participation, all because, you know, you're part of Cell International this year. This is what we are, you know, hugely uh, taking up as a part of fluency program. If you're interested in joining this program, just uh, participating in this program, if you're interested to participate by uh, doing an artwork or uh, you know, telling me, making a video, click on this form, just copy and paste this form, click on this form, and they will be asking in how, how would you like to participate, artwork or uh, video. You select on which ways you would like to participate and then submit the form. The moment we are ready with the competitions when we are announcing it, the ones who have filled this form will be our first priority. We'll be contacting you with uh, the kind of participation that you can give us. So this is HS for a human security for all uh, link. Copy it and keep it properly and try to fill it by today. And the next one is, do you know that we have created two games for you, two gaming apps, which you can play for free because you are in a part of Tilby International. We have the first game is Trekman. You just try to learn 400 words, meaning the Tarun ma'am. No? For your national level, you will have, be having 700 words to learn. This is the Trekman game that we have designed that's available in Android, Apple, and also on your desktop or laptop. You also have a website link. You can download this game, just key in your spin ID, you have a spin ID, and then you can play the game to learn the meaning of all the thousand words. It will be like Hangman game like that, but it's, a, it's called Trekman. Try, please try downloading the game and start playing. It's completely free. Just put in your spin ID. It's only for our students, not for general public. You can start playing that. And we also have another app, phonetics app, where we have this phonetics down. We have this phonetics down in uh, state level. No? Uh, we'll also have it in national level, international level. No? You can uh, do the, all six exercises in this app. But the good thing is you can actually listen to the sounds of the words. In your book, you can't listen to the sound. No, you'll just be reading it. But in this game, you can click on the sound icon, uh, listen to how that word is pronounced, actually learn proper pronunciation, and then start answering. Use this uh, game for phonetics. And your next link, sir, is there any other link? No, oh, ma'am. Okay, that is it. With that, we have come to the end of the session. And you still have 10 minutes more. Uh, take a break for the 10 minutes and uh, new, new Year is in just two days. We from Spelby International wish you all a very happy and uh, joyous New Year. Do enjoy the rest of the night uh, tomorrow and the next day 
Happy New Year to everyone, and I hope I'll be seeing you all in international level bootcamp too. All the best for securing a good position in both the national level and international level. I hope uh, this class you were able to learn a lot of things in this class. And can we end the session? Yes. Okay. We will end the session in five, four, three, two, and one. Bye. -bye.